lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson.
is the okay. <laughs> I certainly hope that you guys got a chance to hear me. I'm not really sure um, if you did or if you're not. I don't know if I need to repeat, but anyway, we're gonna go forward. I do want you to know that this is the Loretta Petite Show, Women Winning at Life, from Ministry to Marketplace, where we address real issues and empower you, the woman, spiritually and shares those usable tips of getting life done in the success lane. And as a dessert, of course, I said before, we like to tap into current events here or there. And, of course, we honor our father, and we thank God for our awesome um, producer and, of course, for Jerry Royce's production, um, Kimmy Kim, my awesome sister in Christ, who is the producer of the Stein Podcast. We thank God for you, woman of God. And, of course, she's the founder of Elation Magazine. We thank God for such a beautiful soul. This is the month of July, as I said, the second day of a brand new month, and there are many observances here. But today we'd like to share a few. It is Social Wellness Month. We all need to become well, socially speaking, Social Wellness Month. There are, you know, some of us have some social issues. We we, we don't want to talk about it or we cannot um Mm, effectively talk about it because we don't want anyone to tell us anything. It's difficult. I don't know what it is, though. I don't know what it is that we have a hard time letting somebody tell us something. Why? Why is that? This is social wellness. Well, let's get well. Let's get well. You cannot be the one to demand what someone says what someone would say and how they would say it. You can't demand that. The only thing you can do is present yourself as one uh, desiring that respect or demanding that respect. So if they talk to you in a way that you are not happy with, then you don't feel that fire, okay? Um, But learn how to deal with difficult people. Some people are truly, truly difficult and don't know they're difficult. I could be one of them. For some people, I could be very difficult to deal with. Um, I don't try to make that happen, but it's something I probably have to have burnt out of me as I go on. Um, But I don't see myself as that kind of a person on a consistent basis. Sometimes there are prompts. Sometimes there are um, provocations that cause one to react to an action. Nevertheless, we want to get well socially, know how to deal with each other. That's what uh, July brings, an opportunity for us to focus on that, evaluate on self. And since we all like to become researchers in this 21st century with our Google and all of that, let's research on how we could approach people better, how we can speak to people better, how we can tolerate people better, and simply said that, when someone asks you something or someone says something to you or someone um, tells you something, sometimes you have to just pause and say, wait a minute. You know, I, I, I don't like being addressed like that. Or you may have to say, wait a minute. Um, I'm only trying to have a conversation with you. Um, so we have to work on dealing with difficult people because we all are difficult at some time or another. None of us are angels. Come on. Come on. None of us are angels. We don't have those wings yet. God has still got to burn some things out of us. But if you think that you don't need anything burned out of you, then you're missing it because we all fall short of the glory of God. When we fall short of the glory of God at that very moment, we are probably a difficult person. So let's keep that in mind. Let's just work on ourselves, though to be the best we can be, Social Wellness Month. July is also Women's Motorcycle Month. For all of our sister riders, I want to say high five. You know, stay safe out there on the road. Um, I was surprised when one of my classmates, who were like maybe an underclassman uh, under me, told me she was in a motorcycle club, and she said, oh, yeah, I love it. We ride from city to city, sometimes from state to state. That is awesome. They all, like, kind of chill out, put their bikes in by a bar and grill. They go in, you know, eat themselves a little something, uh, chill out. Some of them, yeah, unfortunately, drink a little something, you know, to get back on the road, unfortunately. But, um, you know, some of them are Christian groups. Well, there's a pastor here. He has a motorcycle service. 
motorcyclist service here. I don't know how often he has it, but, man, when you pass, there are hundreds of motorcycles out there. Hats off to him. Um, and also July is Freedom from Fear of Speaking Month. I have a program that I call Speak at Peak, and I help people who struggle with public speaking to be able to be more relaxed, to be able to uh, keep that continual flow of thought going, because many times when people get to a mic, their minds go blank, right? And they don't remember what they were saying. You know, when I first started preaching the gospel of my awesome Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I would preach. And then as I'm preaching, man, it was like this power was inside of me. But I would I would come to a place where I would kind of like, I'm way out there and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what was I trying to say? It was like, it was like, it was awesome. It was like that, that surge of um, zeal. And, and I did have knowledge, but I wouldn't stick to my script. And so, you know, I would see that I would have a dangling word here, a dangling sentence there. And I said, I have to correct that action. I had to work on that to be more um, uh, on purpose with everything I was saying. So, you know, when I talk about Speak at Peak, this is a program where um, I help men, women, and teenagers to be able to speak um, even with the fear, but know how to contain the fear to do what they have to do. Because there's a lot of people yapping, a lot of people talking, but honestly, when you listen to them, you wonder what, (laughs) why haven't they gone to you know, get some type of grooming in that area. I'm not trying to say none of us are perfect. We have to always throw that out there as a caveat. I have to throw that out there as a disclaimer because people still say, well, you're not perfect, da, da, da. No, it's not about being perfect, but it's about being to a level of comfort where you can really um, be influential, when you can really uh, share and make a difference Uh, And you can get up and you can say what you have to say and be clear about your order where people can follow you. You're not jumping all over the place. There are some people that talk, 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 and they loud with it and they go from, they jump, they jump, they jump. No, 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 no. Sometimes you have to remember. You have to remember the basics. There is an opening. There is a body. And there is a clothes. And then there is a craft on how you do those. So freedom from fear of speaking month. But the thing I want to remove from all of that is even though you may be all over the place, don't stop speaking if you have something good and godly to say because people need to hear it. They need to be inspired by it. And those of us who may realize you're jumping all over the place with good sense and a good heart for the Lord are not harshly judging you, but just realizing that maybe there's someone that I could really reach out to and assist. Um, But, you know, I'm all about helping, but there are two things. I'm not about being used. I'm I'm about helping. I'm I'm about helping, not about being used. And so basically what that is is um, don't ask me for my services for free. When I come to get your services, I have got to charge the premier rate. So I'm about helping, but I'm not about being used. And then secondly, I'm about helping those who can humble themselves and receive the help. I'm about helping those who can humble themselves and receive the help, help when they're hearty, when they think that everybody and everything revolves around them. I really can't help you. So I will withdraw my help. I will just let you go and do what you have to do and what have you. But if I see that you really want the help, I'm about helping. Okay, so June brings us Social Wellness Month. Let's work on being well socially, one with another, Women's Motorcycle Month. And in in this month, why don't we just intercede for them on the road like that? They have goals and they have things that they're trying to do as well. I remember Fred Hammond, he had his little motorcycle group. It was a Bible motorcycle group. They would go on motorcycles to meet other motorcyclists so they could share the gospel. How awesome. So let's intercede for our women motorcyclists and freedom from fear of speaking month. If you need my services, holler at your girl. I do. I'll work with you over Zoom, one-on-one, or in small groups as well. We will get the job done, okay? So if you'd like to reach out to me, I'm Loretta Reviews at gmail.com. That's Loretta Reviews at gmail.com. 
I would love to talk to you, and I would love to see where you are, where you're trying to go, work out a plan that could really help you. I have been in the broadcast business uh, from 1990, I mean, for all of these years, and I went in uh, as a timid and fearful individual, (laughs) but we were coming out. We were coming out during that, that time. We were coming out of that fearful stage but um, it was still a lot I had to work out right there. But I had the, I was given the, the, the platform, you know, to go forth. And it was hard for me uh, the first year or so. Even in the midst of that, people saw in me what I didn't see in myself. And uh, I was promoted through all of that that I was still working through, but I was still being pushed forward. How awesome is our God? So if you need me, you know. I'm Loretta Reviews at gmail.com. So looking at our news now, in the national news, the Washington Post reports that there's another plague in our midst. Can you believe it? There's another plague in our midst. This one is starting in East Africa where hundreds of billions of locusts fueled by conflict and climate change is alleged to say swarming the country. So that many, uh, they, they are guesstimated, estimated, or swarming the country. And the question is, are we next? I pray not. That's a plague of biblical proportions. I pray not. But uh, that's what's going on. Welcome to our July 2nd edition of Loretta, the Loretta Petite Show, Women Winning at Life from Ministry to Marketplace. And once again, I give a shout out to my awesome producer, Miss Kimmy Kim. Um, today we want to look at resources that we have hidden in, in, in plain sight, resources hidden in plain sight. So if you know that there are uh, people around you that will be there for you, because if you have trust issues, it's hard for you really to trust people who look like friends one day and you have a question mark on them the next day. Sometimes you want to share things because your heart is full and, you know, heavy and you want to share things, but you don't, Um, know if you can trust this particular friend with this information or this business friend with this idea so you have trust issues. Um, I wish I was doing a show on judging because we have got to sit down and stop doing that. People have real issues, and it doesn't make you bad because you have real issues. We all have real issues. Our issues are just different. So if you have that kind of situation where you want to be able to talk to someone who uh, can be discreet and keep your secrets, those things that would embarrass you if they came out or those things that would make you feel some type of way if they came out, then, you know, understand that just like me, there are women uh, and you can go to brothers, hey, you know, because when I had a situation way back in the day, my dad took me to a pastor, and he was very uh, in, into it. He was, he was, you know, really, like, had a good, strong relationship with the father, and he was able to help me uh, through that particular time. But since we're talking to women, empowering women on this podcast, I want you to know that there are women clergy out there. So what I would do and what I have done in the past, I watch people, people that I had to do certain things for me, certain uh, jobs for me, people that I um, contracted with or was contracted to or people that I just had working alongside me, and maybe I stipend them. Um, I watch them. I watch their character, and I watched Um, the way that they presented themselves, I watched how much they talked about people's stuff, you know, and I feel like, you know, there are people in your home that you share things with. You and your husband, you share things. You and your child, you share things because, you know, there's a bond there. They won't go talking your stuff. You don't go talk their stuff, but sometimes you guys can help each other to get through a breakthrough to go back and share with someone that told you. And then sometimes things are just so intimately personal. You don't share with nobody but God. You say, Lord, help them through this situation. So find a sister, 
uh, that may be, you know, called of God to this gospel ministry. In my field of ministry, I studied and I prayed to get to this place. I studied and I prayed. I prayed and I cried. I fasted and I cried and I prayed because I really wanted to understand what it was to get to know God intimately and what it was to live for God um, and stop cursing and all that that I used to do when I got angry with my spouse back in the day and, you know, and stop fighting and stop picking up weapons and, you know, and stop being ready to just go off and tell a person, give them a piece of my mind. I needed all that burned away. I needed all that burned away. Now, not to say that sometimes they don't pick, pick their heads. You got to die daily. Paul said we must die daily. And sometimes when we have gotten too busy and we're not into our word, we're not into our worship and our prayer, guess what? That weak moment can come just like that. So we've got to stay prayed up. But in this service of God, in this ministry, I've had to go through some things. I've had to humble myself. I had to submit to things I didn't really like or un- I didn't like because I didn't understand. But it was all about what the price was for this anointing. There's a price you pay for the anointing. I watch and I listen to people all the time. It's not that I'm not into what you're doing. It's not that I'm not there with you, but I'm watching. I'm paying attention because Holy Spirit sometimes is telling me things, speaking to me, showing me you, the you that you're hiding from me. He's showing me you. So I want to say hats off to all the sister clerics out there, you know, Uh, Keep on doing what you're doing. People are going to disrespect you because that's just how people are disrespectful. But you hold the banner of high and continue to be who God has called you to be. So in our calling, I want you to know you have a resource in us. 2 Peter 1 and 10 tells us we must make our calling sure. It's not how much we talk or how loud we talk, but it's important that we talk and that we share the word of God. Some of the duties of a licensed and ordained minister, such as myself, uh, we pray for your sick and we pray with you. We have a prayer ministry. This is a prayer ministry. We carry with us to every address. We carry with us to every bus stop. We carry with us in every Uber. We have a prayer ministry. That is what we are called to do. We pray with you. We pray with your sick. We intercede for you. Even when you have crossed us, when you've hurt us, when you have said ugly things to us or about us, It is a ministry in our bosom that we pray and that we believe God on your behalf. We eulogize um, your deceased. We officiate at the funerals. We do graveside services. We are a resource in your midst. Use us. Not everyone who states that they are ministers are registered with their state or sanctioned by their leaders uh, to float in such roles. So don't get out of order because God is a God of order. And if this is what you desire, you go to your man or woman of God and you say, this is, you know, what I am feeling I'm called to. Let them guide you into where you need to be. But for those who are, I want you to know that you have a resource. Come to us. Let us be there with you and for you. Yeah, we have our own issues. Absolutely we do. But that's aside from our spiritual calling, aside from our spiritual assignment. Again, if you need any of those services, seek out a licensed and ordained minister to be there with you. We're talking about women winning at life. You can't win apart from God, and God is a spirit, and God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. We offer biblical counseling. We may not be able to offer you clinical counseling unless we have taken those steps in that journey to get to where we needed to get psychologically, um, socially, or what have you, but um, we offer biblical counseling. If you're struggling in your walk, your marriage, your job, with your vision, your dreams, your finances, hey, we will walk with you through the word of God. There is word. There's word. There's word for you. We offer wisdom on strategic organization. The Bible has principles for everything you need. Sometimes we just need to confide, to get honest, spiritual feedback. And sometimes it's easier to speak with someone you don't know. So, again, if you need me, reach out or another ordained minister. It's not about me. It's just about helping you to get to where you're trying to go. 
I know I have a couple other things I wanted to share real quick. Uh, we even bless your homes. We christen your children. Uh, we help you create beautiful weddings through the word of God by officiating. Um, as you work your design, we're working God's word and help you get your beautiful words together for that man or that woman. Uh, of course, you're going down the aisle with, if you're a brother, that woman. If you're a man, if you're a woman, that man. That's what I meant by that statement. So you have resources in your ordained ministers, okay? So don't take them for granted. Know that they are there to do these services for you. And to my next point, I only have two minutes. Hey, listen, the single life. There's a struggle in the single life. I was just sharing with uh, a married sister who's been in marriage, uh, her marriage for a long time. Um, 1 Corinthians 7.34 says this, to be concerned about the Lord's affairs when you are single and offer him uh, your body and your spirit. Be there to do the will of the Father. Romans 12 and 1 says that our bodies are offered to God as living sacrifices. Titus 2 and 6 tells us that we've got to operate in self-control. Yes, I know about hormones. I know about your body talking to you. I know about looking at guys and, you know, and whatever, swooning and what have you, but Titus 2 and 6 talks about self-control. And then the woman in the married life. Sometimes she's married, but sometimes she feels lonely. She's not connecting. They're not coming together in one accord. And sometimes, even though he's married, he still wants to think and act like a single man, or you might be married thinking or acting like a single woman. But there is a need. The Bible tells us in Genesis 2 that you are to cleave together. You are to cleave, come together in oneness. So you won't have to be married and feeling lonely. You don't have to be married and feel like you can't talk to your spouse. You don't have to be married and feel like you're not supported. The Bible says, cleave, go research that, do your homework on that. Married woman, married life, it's going to be challenges. You're going to have ups and downs, times when you disagree, but know how to go back to Titus 2 and 6 and control yourself, self-control. Titus 2, 3, and 5 talks about walking in holiness inside of your marriage as well. And remember, to cleave to your husband, Colossians 3.13 says, and even to submit to your own husband. So keep that in mind. We have real issues in single life. We have real issues in married life. And none of us are perfect. We may even trip sometimes. We may even fall sometimes. But, honey, it's not about how many times you fall. The glory comes and how many times you're going to get back up again. So be encouraged to focus on what is it that God wants from me today? Every morning, that should be your question. Father, what is it that I can do for you today? As I close, I'd like to leave this thought with you from Norman Vincent Peale. He said, change your thoughts, friend, and change your world. When your thoughts have changed to become thoughts of what does God want from me today, your world will start to change. I know it. I know it. I know it because I've done it. Amen. And I need to, of course, get all the distractions away so we can stay on that straight and narrow. You need to get all your distractions away to stay on the straight and narrow. This has been the Loretta Petit Show, Women Winning at Life from Ministry to Marketplace. My name is Loretta Petit, and I'm winning at life. Bye-bye. Before my life begun I'm so glad That my problems stay with you With confidence I know Your grace will pull me through well, You promise to always be there I trust in you Because I know you
Because I know 